This is by far the easiest way to get Steam up and running in your Godot project. However, there are still some outstanding issues with it that I'll touch on later. But if you're looking to take advantage of those high level networking APIs like Spawner, Synchronizer and RPCs, you can still do that here. In the previous Steam video I did to enable that type of functionality where you can still use those APIs, but connected to a Steam network, we had to use a custom pre-compiled version of Godot to enable that. But for this version, we don't have to do that. We can stick with the normal Godot builds and you can just add this extension to your project and it'll work. Now, that said, it's not quite production ready. If you're just playing around with some friends, that's fine. Or if you wanna just build a prototype, great, but it's not quite ready for production. And full disclosure, it's currently broken on a Mac. And this is why I wanted to hold off on working on this just to see if I can figure anything out in the last week, but I was kind of unsuccessful. So we're gonna demo this today on my Windows computer. So let's get started. If you want to follow along, I'm starting where we left off in the last video because it's only gonna take a few tweaks to get it working. But I should note though, once you actually make these code changes, it won't be compatible anymore with the pre-compiled version of Godot. The APIs are gonna be slightly different. Once you're ready, clone the Godot Steam PDP multiplayer. Again, this is where we left off in the last Steam video where we use the pre-compiled Godot version. So open it up in the normal Godot version though. And you'll notice right off the bat, we have some issues with Steam. And if we open the output, you'll see the Steam multiplayer appear is throwing some errors. So let's go ahead and remedy that. And if you happen to have opened this project with the pre-compiled version, the custom build of Godot, it may have some incompatibilities if you try to run it directly with what we're about to do today. So I recommend just starting fresh or I'll post a troubleshooting link below if you have any problems so you can check there. Uh, so head over to the asset lib tab and let's type in Steam. And we want to grab the Godot Steam GD extension uh, 4.2. This should be compatible with 4.2 as I believe that's what we're using. Yeah, 4.2.stable. So let's go ahead and click that. Hit download. And then it's going to install under the add-ons folder. We don't have an add-ons folder yet, so just hit install. And it'll create it for us. So now you have Godot Steam installed. This will give you access to basically any of the Steam APIs that you would want to use but we're not really gonna use that today. We're only gonna use the lobby functionality in that. And then the next thing we wanna do is download this extension called Steam Multiplayer Peer. So this extension is a separate version from the one that comes with the pre-compiled Godot version that we looked at in the last Steam video. It's gonna use a slightly different networking implementation and it's apparently a little bit better. I'm gonna leave the links down in the description if you'd like to read up a little bit more about that. So then hit download and just go ahead and hit install. It will also install under the add-ons folder. And great, now you have both libraries installed. If we check the output, we still have some errors. Let's just try to run it once. Okay, so it looks like it worked, but it's giving us an error because we're actually using some things that aren't there anymore. Because remember, we're using a different version of Steam Multiplayer. This is the extension version and not the pre-compiled version. And it doesn't like this lobby type public because, well, the library has some differences, like I said before. So let's go ahead and stop that. But that tells us that the Steam library and the Steam multiplayer peer is actually being recognized. So we're good there. If you still run into trouble, just restart the Godot editor once and it should be fine once you reopen it. So now that we have the add-ons installed down here, uh, open up the Steam network file. It's down here under scripts, multiplayer networks, and then just open Steam network. So if you remember in the last video, we have two different files that represents the two different network types. So the Enet network, that's just the common one that ships with Godot. And then the Steam network is the one we added. So in the last video, we looked at how to use the Steam multiplayer peer APIs using the one that comes with the pre-compiled version of Godot. Well, since we're using the extension version, we need to make some tweaks to make that work with this current setup. So we're no longer going to use a lobby system out of the multiplayer peer. We're going to actually use the regular Steam APIs to create a lobby. Now, you don't have to create a lobby, but I just wanted to keep this example project and these changes as simple as possible. And since we use a lobby system in the last one and probably most people are going to use lobbies, I thought it would just be easy to keep the lobby system in place. So we can remove this for now and let's call to the Steam lobby created callback lobby created i think we need to do dot bind here oh whoops i accidentally put parentheses we don't need that 
So all I did here was replace the lobby created callback connection to a Steam version of it because we're no longer going to be using this lobby created one from the multiplayer object because it doesn't exist in this version of Steam multiplayer peer. OK, next under the become host option, let's just remove these calls here because we're not going to use those anymore. And we're still going to use the peer connected and peer disconnected signals to add and remove our players respectively. And let's remove this call to add player out of the become host because we're going to change up the order a little bit. Since we're still using lobby, we also need to create a callback when you join a lobby. So let's go ahead and create that here under the host. And we don't have an on lobby join function yet, so let's create one. I'm going to create it right before list lobbies. And since we want to become a host, we also need to use the Steam APIs to create the lobby so that other players can join to it. We're going to create a public lobby. And I believe I have a constant under the Steam manager that I created that represents our maximum amount of lobby players. And if we go there and double check, yeah, I have it set to 10 right now. So just to get an idea of where this is at, if you hit use Steam and hit host P2P game, it will eventually hit this become host. We looked at that setup in the last video. And at that point, you need to be able to set up a server side calls or signals back to add player and remove player respectively. So that's why we added these here. And also because we're the host, we need to check when a client joins our lobby. So when somebody else connects to our lobby, and then we also need to create that lobby. So that's what we're doing here. When you become a host, you're going to do all these things to get that established. So we have this function from the previous example on lobby created. So once we actually create the lobby right here, it's going to hit this callback. And so we need to do some changes down here. All of this is actually good to go. But what we need to do is finish setting up the host. So let's add a function called create host. And then let's go ahead and use the multiplayer peer APIs to create the host. So this is where one of the big differences are between the two versions. This is how you create a host in this version. The other version, we were using the multiplayer peer APIs to create the host, which we deleted uh, up here earlier. OK, we're going to pass in zero and an empty options array for the uh, virtual port and options respectively. And that's just we don't really need to customize anything in here. So this create host setup should work fine. So if we don't have any errors, meaning the response from the create host call is OK, then we're going to go ahead and establish this host as a multiplayer peer. And this is a new function that we're going to be using that is different from the previous example. And the multiplayer peer, if we scroll to the top, is just the same declaration that we had from the previous video. So now what we want to do now that we've established our host as a multiplayer peer, let's add our player to the game. Great, and we'll use the existing add player to game function call to get that player to show up in the game. This is an artifact left over from the ENet networking setup. I don't think this is going to work and we, I haven't tested that. The Steam setup isn't configured to work in dedicated server mode. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it here just to be sure for now. So if you need to set up a Steam host or whatever to be in dedicated server, uh, just be aware that you may have to configure this to be a little bit different for that setup. If we end up getting an error, we are not going to go ahead and set up the peer and let's just print out the error. So if you are testing this on a Mac, again, it's it's not really working on the Mac right now. This uh, multiplayer peer plugin, this Steam multiplayer peer plugin has some issues with it. I'm sure we'll get it sorted out, but right now it's not really supported. So if you try to create a host, it's likely going to fall in here and give you an error. I believe the error is 20 for creating a host and 25 for a client. And I'll put some links down in the description below that will track those issues. 
So now that we have our host set up, we also need to build out the functionality for joining as a client. So if we scroll up to where it says join as client, again, let's just take a look at where that would happen if we hit use Steam. Uh, if you listed lobbies, the lobbies would show up here. And then if you clicked on the lobby, that is going to eventually call to this function here. And we need to make a couple of tweaks to that as well. Since we're no longer using this multiplayer peer version of that, let's delete these two lines and we're gonna use the Steam APIs to actually join the lobby. So the first thing we wanna do is establish an on lobby joined callback as well for the client so that we can set up that client once they're in the lobby. And here we are going to join the lobby. And we'll just use the lobby ID that we passed in. And that lobby ID will be passed in because once you click on the lobby in the list here, it'll it'll be associated with that ID and that will get subsequently passed to this function. So we tell Steam which lobby we want to join as a client. And while I'm thinking about it, let's change the name of this example game to bad two, two, three, three or something like that, just so we don't have a bunch of people testing on the same name using a bunch of different versions of this uh, demo game that we have here. So now we have the code set up for becoming a host and then joining that lobby because we created the lobby. We're going to automatically be part of that. And then if you want to connect to that lobby, here's our code for that. And here's our line for joining the actual lobby. But we need to handle what happens when you actually get into the lobby. So if you remember earlier, we created that on lobby join function, which has bindings for both host and client setups. So any logic that needs to be performed when a lobby is joined will be performed here. The signal for on lobby join actually has some parameters, so let's fill those out. So we'll have the lobby ID, permissions, locked status, and the response. If our response is equal to one, we have a good successful lobby join. Let's grab the ID of our lobby owner. So now we'll check if the ID is equal to the Steam client that we're running as. And what that means is, are we actually the owner of the lobby? If we are the owner, we can basically just ignore this step because we're already in the lobby and we don't have any other additional setup. And because we called this create host function earlier, we already added the player to the game but we still need to do some initial setup for the client. So this is any other client that's connecting to the game, or I should say lobby. But we need to establish a network connection so that we can start communicating game data between the host and the other clients. So let's create a function called connect socket. And we'll have an else statement here in a second. Let's create a function right down here, connect socket with the Steam ID. And here we need to establish the client multiplayer peer. And we'll use the create client API. This is one of the big differences from the previous example. Pass in the Steam ID. And of course the virtual port and options we can just leave as default options there. If we don't have any errors, so if our error variable is okay, and we'll go ahead and establish this person as a multiplayer peer to the host. And we'll connect it with the multiplayer peer on this instance that again was created at the top. Now, if we do have an error, like for some reason we can't actually create a client, like if you're currently on a Mac, uh, we'll go ahead and print that error out here so you can see what's going on. And now that I'm just looking, uh, when we're going to list lobbies, I don't want to hard code the name bad anymore for our filter. So let's use the actual lobby name that we established at the top. Lobby name. I just saw that there and realized that we need to change that. So if you're creating lobbies with this name, you should be querying on them or filtering on them using this uh, line of code right here. Uh, we didn't really touch on that in the last video. I added a comment below it. But just so you know, when you want to list lobbies and you have a you know distance filter worldwide and you're not really getting the lobbies results that you expect, like you don't see your lobby in the results, 
Well, you have to add a filter to it so that it returns your lobby. You know, there's hundreds, if not more people probably testing with the uh, the demo ID, the 480 uh, at any given time. Right. So Steam's only going to give us a few results because it's in their best interest to not like give hundreds of results back to, you know, your lobby request. So just do yourself a favor. And when you create your lobby, you know, give it a name and that's unique to whatever your test game is. And then make sure you on the back end of this, when you want to list the lobbies for your clients, just add this filter here with name and the lobby name that you established for your game. So one more thing before we wrap up the unlobby join callback, uh, the response is a bad response. So anything other than one, you could just print out whatever response was. I'm going to use an example from the demo game that this is based on. If you go under to the Steam multiplayer peer uh, add on code, uh, select demo, the demo branch, and I believe it's under game state right here. Yeah, I just basically used their printout for it. So I'm going to just copy that over. I don't really want to type all this out. And what it's going to do is it takes the response and matches it to one of the response error codes, and then it just prints out the reason. So maybe if you are blocked, it'll say, you know, if it's code 11, if, if you get a response back that's code 11, it'll say you're blocked. It, you know, it'll give you if you're banned from a lobby, uh, it'll get a code six back and so on and so forth. So that's just all this section is going to do. And again, I'm taking it from the demo project that I'll have linked in the description below. All right. I think we're ready for a test. And again, you can't really test this on the same computer uh, when you're using Steam. But I'm going to go ahead and hit use Steam and host P2P game just to make sure that worked. OK, great. So. That's working fine. We have a lobby created and I was able to join and connect to it. So let's do a build and put it on my other backup computer and we'll see if we've got a successful test. So to build, just go under project export and I'm going to build for Windows because that's the only thing that's working at this point. I actually I can't say that maybe Linux is working, but I know Mac isn't working. And so we'll select export project. So I like to remove the space out of the game name. I don't know. It's just force of habit. And I'm going to create another folder called Windows Client. Sorry for the loud typing. And I'm just going to save it here. All right. That looks good to me. And then I'm going to start it on the other computer. So let's launch the host here. Host P2P game. OK, so that's set up and I'm going to put it on my other computer and launch it there. OK, so I'm on the other computer. I'm going to hit use Steam. I'm going to list lobbies and I can see the lobby right there with our name 2233. I'm going to click join. I'm going to click the button to join and there I am. I fell in. Perfect. So as you can see, I can jump around on the other computer. And it's totally working. I'm able to jump in real time and move around. Now there is a bit of a lag and if my voice cut out there, I apologize. I was facing the other computer uh, and I'm jumping around and there is a significant amount of lag between the computers because of the way this controls are set up. But that's a little bit out of scope for this. But remember when I said at the beginning of this video, there are some issues. Let's take a look down at these logs really quick. As you can see, we're getting tons and tons of errors. And if we look down under the errors tab, I'm getting this warning that's just spamming like crazy. We're up at the like 20,000s. Uh, it's just repeatedly getting spanned because I believe our synchronization is running into some bandwidth limit or something. I don't exactly know what's causing this error. I have created an issue for it underneath the add-ons repository, and I've got a couple notes in there. I don't know if this is going to be something really easy to fix or if it's a bigger issue or not. You know, the developer could come on there and say, hey, this isn't a big deal. We just need to change something or what, because it is a warning and not necessarily an error. So it is working correctly. Uh, and so that is pretty much the basis setup that we need and to make changes from the last Steam project to this Steam project to work with the extension. Some of you guys were asking about it, so I just thought I would just do a quick video on it to show you how to do that. So now again, you are going to experience some decent amount of lag because I don't have any client prediction. I'm going to be working through that soon. Hopefully I can get that out in the next couple of weeks. So please stay connected for that. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like it. It is greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.